So we'll start with a clean slate. We'll first install Laravel and then we will install this package and see how things work. So I'll go to my terminal. I hope you are able to see it. I'll just zoom in a bit and I'll do composer require or sorry, create. Project Laravel slash Laravel and we will name this project as the package itself. Now that I have installed Laravel framework, let's get into it and I'll open it up inside Visual Studio Code. I'll zoom it up a bit as well and now let's install this package. Now this package can be installed as a normal PHP uh, dependency where you know this is I would say like not dependent on the framework. You know, there is a version of Salon which is Laravel agnostic and then there is a Laravel version of it as well. And it obviously makes sense for us to install this particular version. So we will install that. I'll copy this, come over here and install that. Done. Let's quickly look at our package JSON to just confirm rather the composer JSON. All right, we have this in place. What else? To read more about the Laravel integration. Now I have done a basic scan of this package and then I decided to uh, create the video. So I have not complete knowledge and I will explore along with you. Okay, we can publish a, com uh, a config file. Let's see what are the different configs that we have. Okay, not much. It's a uh, guzzle sender, which basically means that behind the scenes, this package is using guzzle to make those API calls, which obviously makes sense. After that, there is one important thing that we would need to understand. This package also exposes quite a few artisan commands and they are quite useful when you are creating certain stuff. For example, we have connector which creates a connector. We will get into the details what they are. We have connector, we have request. If we want to do any custom res uh, response, we can create plugins, authenticators, so on and so forth. But most of the time in this series, we will be kind of limited to a connector and a request. So with these things done, uh, Salon comes with a sender built in for Laravel. The HTTP sender uses HTTP client under the hood, which allows you to guess, to be handled by Laravel just by using the HTTP client. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm fine with Guzzle. And yes, we can use mock client. And there is a specific way we can write tests in uh, Laravel, which we will look at. But so far, what we have done is basically install the plugin. We saw that there is a config file, which basically allows us to configure the sender class. You know, by default, it is Guzzle. We, we can do HTTP sender, which is the Laravel's default. But again, it's a wrapper on top of, if I'm not wrong, Guzzle. So we'll continue with Guzzle, right? And yeah, it exposes quite a few commands, which are useful. So that's that's it. Let's look at how we can create our connector and what is the reason behind creating a connector. So connectors. Connectors, if you look at the definition, it says that connectors are classes that hold the basic requirement of an API integration. Connectors communicate with the HTTP client. A connector expects a base URL to be defined, but you can also register defaults that would be shared with your request. Now, what basically that means. So let's take an example if you are making a call to json placeholder api and if you are not aware i'll just show you okay that's json formatter json placeholder api all right this is one endpoint a fake um, api where you get certain data points okay and i'll show you what are the different resources that we have we have about 100 posts 500 comments albums photos, to-dos, users, that, that kind of stuff. 
And if I click in it, click into it, so this is what the data will be. So if you see in this whole thing, we have this URL. Now, when we are making an API call, there are quite a few things with, that we need to consider. First of all, what is the base URL? Because you know I can request for users, I can request for to-dos, which is slash to-dos, I can request for posts. But in all of these URLs, there's one thing common, which is the starting of the URL, which we also call the base URL, because it doesn't matter how many requests you make, this particular thing will always come in as the first part of the URL. And hence, it makes sense for us to create this as a base URL, okay? So, if I create a new you know, file, what we can say is, this is our base URL, and then if we are trying to get users, then our endpoint is slash users. If we are taking to-dos, then our endpoint is to-dos. And if we are taking posts, obviously, it's posts. And hence, the connector will request you to configure the base URL. So every time we are making a request to the JSON placeholder API, the connector, this particular connector will be called and hence Salon will know that this is the URL where we need to target. And that is the responsibility of the connector. Now to connect to any API, there is more to just calling the URL. Now this is a free API, there is no authentication or any specific you know, API keys required, but if you have done any kind of API authentication or an API calls, you would know that there are some mechanisms of authentication, right? It can be a username password being sent in some form, or it can be an API key, a server key, something like that. And most of the time, they are passed as headers. So, if we go through the connector's documentation, the first thing that it requests you to set is the base URL, which we need to do. And then, it also allows us to send certain default headers. And this is where what I can do is add certain sp specific things. For example, I can say that my header, which is um, now, I think in the postman or something, we get, um, let me see if I'm able to use Thunder Client to auth, yes, bearer token, right? So. Um, let me see what is the exact name if I do this. Okay, headers. Response. This is the response header. How can I look at the request header in this? Maybe not. I don't know. Um, at least in Postman, I would get that. Hmm. But yeah, so it does gives me the you know, uh, authentication uh, key and then I could pass that. Let me see if I get, yes, authorization. Authorization is the key and then you can pass bearer and then the token, which is very similar to, you know, if you are using um, Sanctum, you will you, uh, do that kind of an uh, authentication and you'll send that authentication token, right? So if we want to do something like that, we can send that. Now here, what we are doing, we are adding the content type, we are saying that we accept an application JSON, which means that when the response is coming, right, we would expect it to be a JSON based thing. And then you have n number of ways you can send any headers. So that's the basic usage. And also there is one more option, which is default query. So um, let's just say, and you know, you are querying the JSON placeholder API and they have a lot of data, right? And if you, if you want to uh, limit certain things at a global level that any request that I make, it should not give me more than 500 results, right? Then we can send these default configurations, which 
is handy. I don't remember ever using it in any third party thing, but obviously in some of the APIs that we made, right, for the mobile clients to consume, we always had a per page thing, very, very similar to this, where you know the client would be able to at any point of time configure how many items that they want. And basically that allows us to, you know, if there is a front end table, a data table where they have those drop downs, right, it would automatically configure that at a global level that that what you know made those configurations yeah that's about it that's the connector so let's try and create one although by creating it we will not be able to make a request but we will understand what are the things which are happening so php artisan let's see all the commands that we have we have these and right now we are going to create a connector Oops, let me copy that out. Copy. PHP artisan. Right, what is the related integration? If I, okay, if I get rid of this and if I type help, you'll see it basically expects two arguments, which is the integration and the name of the connector. So why don't we say that our, oops, Integration name is JSON placeholder API. Connector name is JSON placeholder. And what that would do is basically, if I go to my code base, inside my apps folder, I'll just close these things. We have HTTP and inside the HTTP, we have integrations. This folder got created and then this is the name of the integration. If you look at my uh, responses to those two questions, it said, what is the related integration? And that's my JSON placeholder API and the connector name is JSON placeholder. I could have named it as JSON placeholder connector, but um, that's fine. I mean, right. Let me close that out and obviously we need to give the base uri i'll do that this is my base uri and right now i don't need any default headers but if we need that we will put that in no default config as such so yeah this is how we create our connector and we saw what are the different configurations which are available inside a connector in the next video we will look at how we can create requests and what are their responsibilities.